Hello, I'm Peter Miller. I am the Herpetology Collection Manager and Biology Collection Interpreter with the Burke Museum of Natural History and Culture at the University of Washington in Seattle, Washington. So garter snakes were collected uh, and have been collected since the beginnings of the museum itself. And the museum has over 1,200 specimens of garter snakes. And of those, a little more than 800 of them have not been identified down to the species level. So what are we doing? We're taking our time to figure out exactly who is who. Why do we do that? Well, we always think of the collection and all the collections as a library, a giant library of information. And if you can imagine cooking books on a shelf in a library, and all you see is the word cookbook, 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 but you don't know what's inside of it. Well, you can't do too much with that if you just are randomly sampling books. So you really wanna know what's inside the book. Is it a book about meat? Is it a book about fish? Is it a book about vegetables? And so what we're doing is dividing each of those, in this case snakes, into particular groups or particular individual species so that we know who's who. And then from there on, then we can do research projects knowing what we have. The majority of the collection of garter snakes is from Washington State. And we have three different species of garter snakes. Uh, and these collections have started way back in the early 1900s. And they've gone all the way through to actually up to and including the present, where we have a PhD student working on the evolutionary biology of garter snakes. What is the name garter snake? So um, I can go through a little history of the garter snake itself. So back in 1843, there was a zoologist named Leopold Fitzinger. And in 1843, he wrote a very large book about reptiles. And in particular, he used uh, that book to describe the, gar the, the whole family group of garter snake, which is Thamnophis. What is Thamnophis? So the genus name Thamnophis is a Greek name and Thamnos, as you can see, means shrub or bush. And Ophio is a Greek name and that means serpent. So Thamnophis is serpent of the bush or serpent of the, of the shrub. And then when we're looking for garter snakes, we typically find them in your garden, in dense shrubs, and almost always around water. So in Washington state, we have three different types of garter snakes. One of them is called Thamnophis sertalis. This is like the family name, this is like your last name. And in my case, that would be Miller. And the first name is sertalis. That's the species name. That would be me, Peter. So Thamnophis sertalis is actually the common garter snake. The common garter snakes we find all over the United States, Florida, Maine, up into Canada, all the way across to uh, Western Washington, California. And sertalis, means like a garter. Well, what's a garter? Most of us don't wear garters anymore, but once upon a time, people would wear garters to keep up their socks. They're little straps that go around the top of your calf and they strap into your, to your sock to keep your sock up. And garters got really fancy and sometimes they had patterns on them. So the first person that saw a garter snake saw the patterns on the snake and thought it looked like a garter that one wears around one's leg to keep one's sock up. The second type of garter snake that we have in Washington State is called Thamnophis elegans. Thamnophis elegans. And the elegans just simply means elegant or the elegant garter snake. These are snakes that live mostly in the western United States, from the Great Plains west to California, Oregon, and Washington, and up into the western provinces of Canada. The third type of garter snake that we have in Washington state is called Thamnophis ordinoides. And ordinoides is also a Latin word, which means ordinary or orderly or well-ordered. And the first person that tried to describe this particular snake noticed that there were very well-ordered black dots in between the stripes that run along the back. And they thought it was a well-ordered row of black dots, less than a Ordinoides. So what's this project all about? We're looking at trying to figure out who are mystery garter snakes 
are in our collection. And remember, we have almost 1,200 garter snakes in the bird collection, and we have a little more than 800 of them that we have to try and figure this out. So I have jars and jars and jars of snakes that are kept in, in ethanol, which is ethyl alcohol. And we know that they are garter snakes, but we don't know which of the three species of garter snake they, they could be. The one thing that I can tell you is that just by looking at them and just by looking at their color is not gonna help me out. As you can see in this picture, this particular snake, Thamnophis sertalis, has actually many different color morphs within its own species. The same with Thamnophis elegans. Lots and lots of color variety that you see within the species. And the same with Thamnophis ordinoides. Lots of color variety within each group. So if color won't do it, then what do I do? So I just went into one of our mystery jars and I pulled out this particular specimen. Beautiful garter snake, very, very typical garter snake with the stripes that run down the back, along the side, and black dots that also are paired all the way around the snake. But remember, that doesn't alone tell us which of the three species of garter snake it is. Now we have to do some counting. So the first place I'm gonna start is on the upper lips. And this is a probe, I'm not gonna actually hurt the snake, but what I wanna do is actually touch it so it helps me count as I move across. Okay, here's the face of this mystery garter snake. And the first place I'm gonna start is with the counting the upper labials. The labials are the scales along the lip. We're gonna start at the front. We're gonna work our way to the back, just about to the corner of the mouth, which is here. And then I'm gonna start at the bottom, start at the front, and work my way all the way back to the corner of the mouth. And then once I get those numbers, I'll check again to make sure I didn't mess anything up and I'll record those numbers down. That's on one side of the face. I'll flip the snake over and do the same on the other side of the face. And believe it or not, sometimes the numbers are a little bit different. So it's important to look at both sides of the snake. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna count the scales across the body. And I'm gonna do this in three different places, close to the neck, close to the middle of the body, and close to the tail itself. What I do is I start with the row of scales that's closest to the belly, and then I work diagonally across the body, across the top, and then down the back. And I'll do that in three different places, and I'll check my numbers each time along the way. It's really tedious, but it's not that hard to do. So I finished my counting with this snake, and according to the records, this snake should be Thamnophis elegans, the elegant garter snake. Remember, I mentioned that colors alone won't tell you what it is. You really have to get into the diagnostic characteristics of what the snake has in order to understand who it is. So this particular snake was caught in 1938 out on the San Juan Islands in Washington State. And it is going to go into a known jar with other garter snakes, which I'm gonna do that right now. So that's it. That's our garter snake project at the Burke Museum at the University of Washington. This is a great project, and if you would be interested in volunteering at the Burke, please contact us. We'll see if we can get you a, a great volunteer job. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more interesting things in herpetology at the Burke Museum.